why did I drop 330 bucks on this guy, the iSimCom EMX7150? It's been a great purchase. Uh, I've just been messing around with it in the studio now. It's, it's gonna have its first show next week, but I'm gonna talk you through why I didn't end up getting another Audix TM1. This is my very first measurement microphone. Uh, it's done wonderful for me on many gigs, but a few key difference, differences set this one apart. Um, you're, if you're watching this, you probably want to get into sound system design and measurement. Uh, and the good thing is, if you're starting out, you don't need a $330 microphone. You just need a $69 microphone. And honestly, you could build an entire rig for less than $250. This is a resource I have at the link below that's found in my audio toolkit or produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. So if you're new, uh, even the software is included. It is open sound meter, which is free to demo and to pay what you want. That's right here. It can run on Mac or Windows. So if you're just wanting to get up and running, get your feet wet, definitely don't run out and buy a $330 microphone. Get something affordable. You can have it for later on in your career if you're doing a show that's maybe raining a lot or outside that you don't want to get your other gear wet. I think it's a great purchase either way. So make sure and check that out at the link below. So let's jump in to why I chose to go with the iSimCon EMX7150. I had three microphones before, and they are these three Audix TM1s. And I'll say this, there was only one thing, quote unquote, wrong with them, and they did not bit, fit my new SPL calibrator. So this is, you're able to take a measurement microphone, let me flip this around, it goes inside here, and this is a little speaker, and it has this adapter here that has it sit and fit down and it plays a little test tone right here. And then you hook it up to your audio interface and then you're able to calibrate that, hey, this microphone when at this input level is at 94 decibels or 110. And then you're able to accurately with a software like Smart, uh, be able to take an, an accurate SPL measurement, you can log it and do all that. So it's really cool. I wanted to be able to do that. And the the uh, Audix microphones I have don't fit either of the adapters. They It's too big for this one and too small for the other one. It's a quarter inch and half inch adapter. I did reach out to Audix and they could get me a special one, but I would need to order, order it. It was another 40 bucks and shipping and waiting. And so I was like, well, I just want to try this other microphone. I've heard about the iSimCon EMX7150. See if it's, if it's good, if it's worth its salt. It's kind of an industry standard piece of gear, and it's not that much of a price difference between getting another Audix TM1 Plus because the EMX7150 does come with the calibration file if I really needed it. I personally don't use them in the field, uh, but I do know from other system engineers talking about these microphones, they do have less overall unit to unit variance than other microphones. So absolutely having that calibration profile isn't, uh, isn't a deal breaker. So that, that was kind of the biggest need is I was like, I want to test out this microphone and I need one that fits my SPL calibrator because this guy's not cheap. <laughs> and I was like, shoot, the Audix doesn't fit in it. Um, so I was able to do that. What I did like about specifically the, the EMX is it did also have a really nice windscreen. It, it puffs right back up when you, when you press on it and fits nicely on here. And you can tell when it's snug against the front of the microphone. I did take a measurement with it. We'll look at that data in a second. And it's there's really no difference between having it on and having it off, which I was surprised by. And just to make sure, I got out the windscreen for my Onyx microphone. And I also put that on there. It's a little bit harder to get on. Um, and a little bit flimsier. And so I just like the foam on the EMX better. Again, I've done a ton of gigs with these microphones. They've been awesome. So I'm not trying to dog on Audix, uh, but I just like how it fits better on the other one. And it also uh, was really transparent as well. So let's look a little bit at the data. So first off is a measurement of sitting basically right here at my mix position from one of my studio monitors, my right studio monitor, and pointed directly at it. And it's probably four feet away. And this is my studio monitor in this room. And this is what I'm calling Audix 00. So the, the first one I bought didn't have a calibration profile. There's no serial number. So I just call it 00. And this is what it looked like. And then I measured Audix. The, the, ser the last two digits in the serial number were Audix one five and then two zero. And this is all without on the inputs, any of the calibration profiles. 
So notice right off the bat, these three audixes, there is a, let's say a almost, probably like a nine dB difference in level here. So that's six up to almost 12. Oh, so sorry, only five dB, <laughs> excuse me, difference between the audix and the, uh, my, the one that doesn't have a serial number on it and the others. Again, without the calibration profiles, this is just the, the sensitivity of the microphones being different. So I can trust if I put serial number one, five and two zero, they're gonna be really, really similar. Then I would just need to adjust the preamp gain down on the other one. No big deal. I've done this in the field for, for, for several years now. Uh, if I match them here at 4K, I can still see that the total balance is even still a little bit different on the, the Audix 00. And so I would need, if I brought that down to match the low frequencies down here, the high end is down. So I basically just visually compensated that from the field of knowing that, hey, that microphone just has a little bit less top end compared to the others um, once I get above 2K. So again, not a big deal, just a couple of dB, but just something to note with, with those microphones. Again, I've had that one the longest. It's been through the most amount of shows with me. So I'm not sure if that's just a result of it being battle tested. So here's now the yellow trace, the side 150. Let's get rid of the double zero and I'm now gonna normalize it at 1K and look at it. And they track very, very similarly to the other one. I would say it has a little bit more top end than both of them. I wish I had another EMX 7150 just to look at that and compare it, but that was it. And just for funsies, here is the EMX 7150 with the windscreen on, and I'll match those at 1K. And just an ever so slight dip here and actually a little bit more at 4K. And that could have just been like the, the sensitivity of the microphone settling in with like the, the phantom power provided and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's, again, really, really, really negligible, negligible difference when using the windscreen. So that was really comforting to me to know and see uh, and actually verify that here in the studio and figure that out. I would say one kind of key difference that I also found with the iSimCon, and not that the Audix can't do this, is that it can run uh, on a very, very low voltage of, of, of 12 voltage, 12 volts as well. Uh, same thing, or but over with the TM1, it needs at least 18 volts to do its thing. So if you're running this on a wireless rig, you could save a little bit of battery um, and putting in a lower voltage mode. And I actually haven't used a wireless rig yet. So I'm, I'm just wondering what is the, uh, the minimum or maximum amount those can supply to measurement microphones in the field. So I'll have to check that out. But I, sh I do know that it saves more battery if you draw less voltage. Again, if you're just needing a super cheap microphone just to have and practice with and still gonna get you really good results, get the Dayton Audio EMM6 or the Behringer ECM800, just honestly, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, but yeah, I ordered this one from Rational Acoustics. It came in in a very timely manner. Um, I love that it's it's really, really low sensitivity, uh, similar to the Audix, but that means I can use it for an SBL application since I can use it with my calibrator. It's been great. I cannot wait uh, to take it to a show next week in Kansas City and use it for the first time. It's been fun to mess around with it in the studio, but it will be great to have it in the field. So that's it. That's that's why I got this microphone. I think it's worth every penny. I think it's going to last me a long time. Pumped about the build quality. Came in very quickly. Love the windscreen. Love the low sensitivity, the low voltage needed to do its thing. It's been a great investment. So if you're wanting to maybe get a little bit more serious or just have something you're going to use for the long haul, I would definitely suggest getting this microphone, the EMX 7150 from iSimCon. I'm Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to get uh, the resource at the link below, and I'll catch you next time.